So let us look at the next sum. You, you could say that contextuality, the first example, appears with the Cohen Spectral theorem. This is a renewed version of the Cohen Spectral theorem, which uses less projection operators. Here you have nine uh, different measurement bases, each one of dimension four, and, and the, the, each line here represents uh, an experiment. And if you get an experiment, if you choose to measure the system in this context, you get one of these. So in the cohen specker theorem, you, you, you try to naively say that uh, properties have true, truth values before the experiment. And so, so you say like, one, zero, zero, zero. Uh, true, false, false, false. But this guy here appears in the second line also. So if it is the same, you should say one, zero, zero, zero here. Again, in order to be consistent with the first line. And so on. You, you fill this in any form you want. But if you do this, you quickly reach a contradiction because you have nine equations. And then if you zoom everything here, you get an, an odd number. But on the right, each property is repeated twice. You can check it. So in the, in the left-hand side, you get an, an, an even number. So how even could be equal to odd? It's impossible. So you will reach a contradiction in any form. You, you, cannot, you cannot. So what is the usual conclusion? The conclusion that you read in the textbook is that just a normal one. There are, there are many, many explanations of this. But one of them is that you cannot assign values to quantum properties previous to measurement, or like uh, unmeasured properties have no values. This is a standard Copenhagen uh, interpretation. But so what is the assumption that leads to the contradiction? When I speak of, of a particle having properties here in this experiment, and I consider the same particle in a different experiment, I am assuming that particles retain identity between different contexts. So in the cohen specker hypothesis will be summarized as this. It is possible to assign well-definite values to all measurable properties of a given quantum system. And I uh, remark, given one and the same quantum system. So if you assume this, you will get a contradiction. So this is false in quantum mechanics. You cannot do this. But then you can avoid the contradiction by negating the cohen specker assumption in at least two ways. Either properties do not have well-defined values, or particles or properties are not identifiable entities. So remember Schrodinger observation. So now you see, here we repeat this property and this property in different contexts. Why are we assuming that this property is the same as this one? if we are changing the context. In physics, this is very usual. And we even agree with this kind of assumption because this, guy's, this guy here has the same uh, marginal. This, it, they have the same probability. But it is not a normal assumption in, in, a, in statistics because people working in cognitive sciences, uh, sciences have the same random variable. When they change the context, they do not identify random variables because that will lead to contradiction. Is that this is a normal thing. That's it's usual everyday work for these people. So why identify? Well, this is one of the assumptions that leads to the contradiction. To say that the, the property in this context is the same as it. Or one might say the contradiction comes from assuming that you have one particle here, and when you have a different context, you assume that it is the same particle. What if they are different? Or what if they are indistinguishable? They, they, if they, the particles do not obey the classical theory of identity, you cannot even say <coughs> this thing. I, I will come back to this. I'm just warming up the, the scenario. So suppose that you have three classical dichotomic random variables, x, y, and z. They can, each of them might take two values. So you can put x, y, and z, and you can fill all possibilities of values. These are all possibilities. And then you can consider the new random variables x, y, x, z, and x, and then you fill these lines in a consistent way. If you do this, you will quickly find that the, the product uh, random variables satisfy these inequalities. And when you use make convex combination or, or take mean values, you will obtain this. 
But this is a, a, a trivial example of a non-contextuality inequality. Why? Look, if I put uh, to x the value 1, or oh, let's put a more complicated one, like this one. If I put this, one, this guy here, the value 1, the value is retained when I measure x in connection to y, or when I measure x in connection to c. So I'm identifying this guy here with this guy here. I change context and I uh, retain the identity, for the identity for the random variable. But what happens in quantum mechanics? Where does the, the violation of Bell inequalities come from? If you only use one observable here and one observable there, you will not get a contradiction. You need to change contexts. You need to measure statistics that come from uh, mutually exclusive experiments. So you have A, suppose that Alice, look, look, I'm being very subtle here. I'm putting Alice imagines that she's going to measure A. I'm not saying that she's measuring. I'm saying she will choose this and he will choose that because it, it's all, I, I, I'm trying to, to remark the logical uh, structure behind the EPR reasoning. So this guy here, so in order to get the contradiction, you need to have something like this. A mes Alice measures A and in context B. In order to get the contradiction, you, you need to mix the statistics from this context to the statistics of this context. When you do this, you mess up. So quantum mechanics violates this. Classical uh, systems do not violate. So uh, bell inequalities are just a, Another example of a vast family of non-contextuality inequalities like this. And they are more complicated. This is perhaps the simplest one. And this one is the simplest with two parties. So, uh, so we want to dig in, into this. So, so now, the question is, A in context B, is it the same as A in context B prime? Should we consider it as mathematicians as the same random variable? Can they be identified or not? What can we do about it? Is it reasonable? If you do normal statistics, usually you will not identify because it's not a good idea. <laughs> so, but but in, in class in physics, we would like to identify because we want to say that this one is the same as this one because it has the same uh, physical units. It is essentially the same operational procedure. It should not depend on the context because of locality and so on. So we would like to say that this one are the same. But we know that we cannot say that they are the same, or at least that they cannot retain their values when we change context. So this is the problem that we are for. So consider the, the collection CA in which you have A tensor B. So this is the collection of all possible contexts in which A could be conceived. So we propose to describe this as a class, the collection of all indistinguishables from A. Instead of having one random variable, we have a collection. So the only thing we can say, according to our proposal, is that we have classes of indistinguishable properties, like a class of x, class of y, and a class of zeta, formed by all possible indistinguishables for x, y, and zeta, respectively. So in order to do this, we use something which is called quasi-set theory. Uh, Set theory is a mathematical formalism that comes from uh, the foundations of mathematics that wants to deal with collections of objects. In standard set theory, you deal with collections of things which are distinguishable, like for example, numbers. You get the real numbers. Each number is different for, from each other. And if they have all properties in common, they are just the same. But in quasi-set theory, which is a theory developed uh, by uh, Desio Krause here, you had a, a, inspired by quantum mechanics and Schrodinger's observations, you have a theory that deals with collections of truly indistinguishable entities. So here you don't have the notion of identity. You cannot say that the, the electrons are different or equal from each other. It is not even defined. So using this, if you have two quasi sets with the same number of particles, they are indistinguishable. So when you fill the tables, the tables before, now, not assuming that this one is the same or different than this one, but they are indistinguishable, you reach a table like this, which is non-classical and violates the non-contextuality inequality that I showed you before. So in this way, we show that if you assume indistinguishability of properties in this case, 
in this case, you will obtain non-classical preordinates. And at the same time, if you assume indistinguishability of particles, so you cannot identify, truly identify a particle in a context or in a different one, you will avoid the Cochrane-Speyer contradiction.